hello everyone and welcome to my channel if you are new if you're not new welcome back to my channel my name is marina and i'm just very happy i have made it this far to this point to make this video i never thought the day would come that's very dramatic of me i know but today we're gonna be talking about a show that you guys know i love um that i've been anticipating the new season for for a while now i'm here to give my thoughts and opinions like i'm so happy to do this so today we're gonna be talking about heartstopper specifically season two of heartstopper everyone cheered <laughs> everyone makes some noise i've watched it twice now about to be a third time when I finish recording this video. If you guys haven't seen my review of season one of me breaking down the characters and what I think about them, you should go watch that because <laughs> that's what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, the show breakdown is just going to be for the second season of Heartstopper. I'm only going to bring up stuff from season one if it's relevant, but for the most part, Everything I'm going to be talking about is what went down in season two. I'm going to give my thoughts on the characters, my opinions on what they did. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to talk about the general stuff about the show that I liked and disliked. And it's going to be a fun time. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I need to calm down. For those of you who are not aware, I have read the graphic novels. I've also read every single Alice Oseman book this year. So now that I have, I'm like 10 times more attached to the characters that I was before which I didn't think was possible um but I didn't reread the books before watching this season so just note that because I don't have my books right now I lent them to someone and I totally forgot to get them back I started reading the third volume on Alice Oseman's website because you can like read the comics for free um but I like reading my physical copy so I didn't get to reread volume three which is my favorite volume before this season that uh, came out um but as I was watching it it jogged my memory a little bit so I will be making some book to show comparisons but for the most part this is just like a breakdown of how I feel about what everyone did on the show okay okay without further ado let's get started <sighs> okay so I'm gonna get the nuisances out of the way you know because why even waste time on them when there's no need to so let's start off with Harry um I didn't talk about Harry in my previous Heartstopper video because nuisance but I feel like it's worthy of bringing him up this time around simply because him and another character I'm going to talk about are like the way that their characters progress is kind of the same yet not and I think that's going to be interesting to talk about so Harry yeah so as we know Harry bullied Charlie last season and he was like Charlie's main bully last season um the homophobic prick and this season he was kind of chill barely even there which i appreciate it but the few times that he was there he defended nick and charlie when his friends were making fun of them and then he also apologized to charlie but also didn't that whole scene where he tried to get into the party by apologizing he never actually said sorry in that whole monologue never said sorry <laughs> so he says that he has learned good for you but the damage that he did and another person I'm going to be talking about next, the damage that they did together to Charlie, unforgivable. Hence why Charlie slammed the door in his face, period. I don't feel neither here nor there towards Terry. My opinions and thoughts have not changed on that boy. Great, he's learned how to be a decent human being. Good for him, but his presence in the show just really annoys me. He has like such jock frat boy energy that just like makes me wave red flags around so yeah harry that's it that's all so next we have ben another nuisance now as much as i would like to get through him as quickly as i did harry he did a lot this season that i have to talk about okay so i'm gonna try to get through this as quick as i can but <sighs> okay ben is obsessed with charlie are we all aware of how obsessed he is with charlie not to not in like a way that like oh he like charlie or he's crushing on charlie no he's literally obsessed with him and i clocked that in season one however comma my video last time where i called out ben for not only being um abusive an assaulter a manipulative prick um and also homophobic y'all really didn't like that um and there are a lot of ben apologists out there 
um, that have been grinding my gears for the past year. Um, so I hope now watching this season, you guys have seen the light, like your third eye has been, has been open. Ben is a terrible person. Okay. There's no redeeming him that I need to see. I don't need to see that on this show. I really don't. Okay. Cause he has done too much. So he's very interested in Nick and Charlie's relationship. Whenever he's near Nick, he wants to bring up Charlie for what? Mm, obsession um calling charlie desperate when he went to go talk to nick and give him back his pen that's none of your business oh you're calling the boy that you like desperate interesting yeah said that nick is acting gay projection self-hatred we get it we know but that doesn't excuse the fact that he's terrible like yeah he has his own issues to work out involving his sexuality but it doesn't change the fact that he's a terrible person get that through your heads okay next said him sexually assaulting charlie was a mistake now i want to talk about this because you guys really gloss over this whenever you want to like find a redeeming quality about ben no one has to like ben Okay, because he sexually assaulted Charlie, we have every reason to hate him and not want him on the show. <laughs> it's okay if you like a character that everyone hates. Like, I've been there. I've done that. However, excusing the behavior like this, such as assault, when defending a character, oh, you guys have lost the plot. Like, this is literally the plot. He's a sexual assaulter. Literally made Charlie's life a living hell. Charlie is never going to be the same because of all of the stuff that Ben did to him. And yet people are just like saying, oh, but he's, he's, he's like, he's just trying to figure out his own issues. Like, he's going to be better. I don't need to see him get better. I don't need to see Ben thrive. Not on Heartstopper. Said Nick and him are the same when that's just not true. You don't want to come out because you hate yourself. Nick doesn't hate himself. He actually really loves himself and his life and the people around him and he trusts the people around him he's just not ready to come out yet because he's just not ready that's just that's all there is to it how dare you compare yourself to nick nelson oh called image and a bitch if you know you messed up if harry of all people tells you that what you did was unnecessary like i'm sorry when harry clocked his tea at the dinner table i had to take a step back and never apologize for that either not that I saw, at least. He never apologized to Imogen for that either. Um, okay. Uh, ambushed Charlie at the exhibition to finally apologize to him. That apology, I'm not going to say too little too late, um, but it wasn't really for Charlie. Not genuine. I could tell, and I'm happy that Charlie could tell too. You're spamming his whole entire text feed. He's not responding. You think it's a good idea to ambush him at his friend's am exhibition that he's at just so you can apologize. At that point, you're not doing it. You're not doing it for Charlie. You're doing it for yourself. So therefore, that apology was shit. Ooh, Ben. Ben. So much to unpack with Ben. Underneath all of this assholery, underneath all that, he's actually a very complex character. I can see why people are so interested in him. However, comma, he has the worst main character syndrome I've ever seen in my life. He makes everything about him. Every single thing that Nick and Charlie did, he somehow related it back to him. Even when Imogen broke up with him because he wasn't paying attention to her, somehow that was Nick's fault. Like, he's just he just has a way of making the, everything his problem everything his issue yet not being able to see that he is the problem and yeah that's ben i think he's annoying and i'm happy that he's not going to be in next season along with the actor because i don't like the actor either so we move i tried to get through that as quick as possible but i was low-key ranting it's okay next up we have david David is Nick's homophobic brother. No one in the family likes him. You could lie and say that their mom does, but it seems like every time he walks into the room, the light in Olivia Coleman's eyes just dims. You can tell that Nick is the favorite, and that's okay, because David's a nuisance as well. Um, he said that Charlie turned Nick gay, quote unquote. Um, we're dealing with a lot of incels this season. Um, <laughs> whoa. Every time he was on screen, I felt like a gray hair stem from my scalp. He was just always stressing me out because he was stressing Nick out. And if you stress my baby Nick out, I will literally, I, I, I was feeling so much anger. There was so much happening this season <laughs> that um, was like getting in the way of my favorite character's happiness. And I was literally just like, ah, I couldn't do anything. 
about it. I just had to watch it unfold because some of these characters are truly just vile human beings. Like David, he's terrible. I do not know how Nick and him are related. They are literally, they couldn't be any more different. For one, the biphobia is so real right now. Like, can we just talk about that? You could just say you're gay. Like, if you're gay, just own up to it. Like, you don't have to lie and say you're attracted to girls. What? Also, why are you in his room? That triggered something in me. As an older sibling that has to deal with siblings in her room all the time, I totally get where Nick was coming from. Because why were you in his room to begin with? Also, like, why are you even here? You say that you're going to stay with your father. Your father doesn't even want you to stay with him. Your father does not give a rat's ass about you. But I'm going to get to their father in a second, okay? Just wait. I think that David, he's just... Ugh. Ugh. Whew. Forcing your brother to come out to your dad at the dinner table where Charlie and his family is at. You have no no thoughts up here to survive. I, I was only trying to help. How? How was that helping? And then saying that Nick is the one making a fuss and causing a scene. Oh, the gaslighting. It's ridiculous. Like, instigator? Never wants to take accountability for his actions. Homophobic. But he also, he's like a grown man, right? Like, isn't he in college? He's like 24 or something. Why are you acting like a 10-year-old? Nick clocked you. Because why are you acting like a 10-year-old? Like, I'm sorry. I know nick's mother bless her heart she's a sweetheart love her to bits and pieces but she needed to say something like the fact that nick had to call him out like he calls him out every single time ridiculous like someone needs to step in at some point because nick he can fight his own battles just fine against like homophobic assholes he can do that just fine however i'm gonna need the parents to step up including their father but again i'll get to that in a second because he, he needs to step up in different ways like just step up as a parent please yes that's david i don't want to see him ever again he can choke on a lego for all i care he's gone i want him out go back to glasgow maybe he had only like 10 minutes 15 minutes of screen time in total i needed him gone i couldn't deal with harry ben and david it was just too much this season no more stop the violence let's get on to characters that i love so i can like calm down so first up we have tori i love tori um i think that she is one of my favorite characters in the whole heartstopper universe because ever since i read solace hair which is tori's book literally i i have such a special place in my heart for her this season it's so apparent how worried she is about charlie and her worry makes me worry the actress who plays tori i don't know her name but she does such a good job of like whenever she's worried about charlie she says so much in her facial expressions because tori doesn't say what she's thinking half the time like she's just in the corner observing <laughs> for the most part so like when she needs to like express herself she does it through her facial expressions so like whenever charlie was saying like how he wants to defend nick help nick come out or something tori was always just worried because she didn't want charlie to get bullied again she's just such a caring sister i can't wait to see more of her next season like hopefully i hope so because i'm gonna need um what's his name i'm gonna need michael next season that's my boy um i'm, I'm gonna need him next season him and tori the iconic duo that they are uh yeah i'm gonna need to see more of her next season i think that they're slowly starting to do that for her and her character um but i would like to see it because this actress she does such a good job of portraying tori told nick that he sucks at keeping promises and you could tell that as soon as she said that she did feel bad she just has the tendency to like word vomit like really bad things and then regrets them later on it's okay nick probably didn't take it too much to heart well he did but like he gets it he understands he understands that tori does what she does says what she says is out of love for charlie like if anything happens to charlie oh she's gonna riot in the streets for example chucking david's phone down the stairs and calling him and i quote a pathetic little man yeah yeah let's do it again like that's my girl i'm sorry i love tori that's bestie love her to bits and pieces let's bring in her solitaire plot l let's give her the cute little bob if you know you know because i'm pretty sure solitaire was already supposed to overlap with volume three of heartstopper this season of heartstopper covered volume three of heartstopper so i expect to, to see her with the bob and michael in this season but i guess it might be saved for later i don't know what alice is writing in that script have no idea but if i were to make a suggestion let's start with tori's story because there's a lot to unpack there um regarding her and her mother's relationship especially let's unpack that 
let's unpack that so next we have sahar um uh -huh. oh how i love sahar i couldn't wait for sahar to be added to the paris squad friend group it was bound to happen i was just counting down the days i love her character in the comics granted you don't know much about her you rarely see her around it's just nice that she's there um and i like how the show pushed her as an actual character like her personality was shown on screen and it was nice it was nice it was everything i could have wanted she's friends with tara darcy and l the girls my girls uh okay um she has history with imogen apparently imogen was dating someone and then when she dated that person she stopped talking to sahar so ooh, drama um she's also a bi queen period her and imogen there's something there's something but i'm gonna save that for imogen yeah that's so hard there's really not much to say i think that she's funny i think that she's cute sweet lovely human being she's just really cool like everything about sahar is really cool like the fact that she plays guitar like her room setup when they showed like that little like panel shot of her room i would like to see it in full i just like sahar so next up we have imogen I can't remember what I said last season about Imogen, but I don't think I said anything rude. Compared to what everyone else was saying when season one came out, a lot of y'all were being really hateful towards Imogen, and I still don't know why that is. I've never felt here nor there about Imogen. She's just a character that I didn't know what the purpose of her was. I did not understand why she was made for the show, because if you guys don't know, Imogen is not in the graphic novels. She was specifically made for the show Heartstopper. So when I saw her in season one, I was kind of just like, you're starting a lot of mess and I hope it's for good reason down the road because I, ge I genuinely did not know what she was supposed to be added for other than to start up some mess. <laughs> She's very messy in season one. This season, however, Imogen, you're good people, Imogen. I like you. I like you. Okay, so she actually is a part of the friend group this season, which made me enjoy her presence. It's like apparently she doesn't have a lot of friends. I thought she was one of like the popular girls popular used loosely because she always hangs around like the rugby boys and i'm pretty sure they're popular in high school terms i don't know um but apparently she doesn't have many friends like no real friends so it's nice that she's a part of like the actual friend group that's nice because i actually enjoyed the scenes that she had with everyone else it was refreshing it was a good step back from how she was in the previous season because i never thought she was mean i just thought she was a little bit um clueless half the time like clueless and somewhat ignorant and she is still a little bit clueless and somewhat ignorant but like it's with the best of intentions she doesn't do it to hurt anyone um her reaction to nick coming out was funny she was like y'all aren't hiding shit like everyone around can see it like it's pretty obvious but she hugged him and i thought that was really sweet i like her and nick's friendship okay because it was already stated last season that they were like the best of friends or whatever so i like how the first episode was just him having to come out to her like having the guts the courage to do that like that was a great way to start off the season i really like that she likes ben liked past tense liked ben but for most of the season she was crushing on ben hard i wanted to just jump into the screen and get her out of there i wanted to get her out so bad but alas i could not do anything i couldn't do anything it's a canon event um so yeah she likes ben and she wouldn't listen to nick when he was trying to tell her that he's bad news like he's done a lot of stuff but obviously nick couldn't tell her exactly what he did because that's charlie's business that's charlie's story to tell not nick's so like of course she'd be a little iffy about it but also nick is apparently your best friend i feel like you should trust his word if my best friend came up to me and told me like hey the boy you're with is bad news like just trust me like you don't want to be around him I would trust it. It seems like Imogen just really wanted some attention the beginning of the season. Like she just liked having someone close to her that she thought looked out for her because apparently her and Ben were friends for a long time as well. So she thought getting together with him would have been nice. Um, so I don't completely, I don't fault her at all. I think she's just like really naive. That's okay. Cause they're like what, 15, 16 in this show. That's to be expected. Glad that she freed herself from him. When she called him out at the dinner table, oh i couldn't do anything but applause i couldn't do anything but just sit there jaw on the floor and applause she's really my girl like I, i've never said anything bad about imogen a day in my life she is that girl she is my girl queenie 
calling out his obsession with Charlie, for one, said that he does need help, which he does, but needs serious, serious help. Oh, I can't stress that enough. She said that she deserves better. And Ben is definitely not that. The look of embarrassment on his face was very satisfying to me. It was very satisfying to me. However, I didn't like seeing her sad. I'm glad that Nick and Charlie want to come for her because like a sad Imogen, it's not really nice to see because um, she's always so bright and happy and smiley and it's just made me sad. She'll find the one one day. And I think that one is Sahar. That like three second, it was a quick clip, but we all clocked it, right? The clip of Sahar looking down at Imogen from the stage and Imogen making eye contact with Sahar while she's on stage. We all clocked the eye contact, right? That was not heterosexual eye contact. We all saw it. It's, it's getting a little fruity. It's getting a little fruity. She's beyond an ally at this point, me thinks. If that is the case, I'm glad that they're going that route with Sahar and Imogen. Like, ooh, best friends to enemies to lovers oh so that's imogen i liked her this season okay so next up we have my baby isaac you guys know i like isaac okay he's also a character that was made for the show he's not really in the graphic novels but i like him as a character i think that his quietness is just a front because isaac has a lot to say i feel like everything he says like he really does bottle in because like his lines giving this season guys look when he called out harry while they were doing that french assignment oh i was gagged i was laughing my butt off literally the one who had to put into harry's mind that he's an asshole was isaac who would have thought who would have thought he had a lot to say when there's not a book in front of his face oh oh he's gonna clock your tea and respect truly isaac's going through a lot this season when it comes to like figuring himself out in his sexuality so he liked james or he thought he did he didn't and that lets him finding out that he's asexual or a romantic on that spectrum um and i hope that we dive more into that next season when it comes to that because i think we don't really see that much representation when it comes to asexuality on tv or mainstream media in general i would love to see more of that developed uh, for Isaac in the later seasons because by the end of the season he was learning more about it like he didn't really know but like he had a feeling that that label fit him very well uh so uh, I would like to see his journey with that um but yeah his journey up to this point figuring it out with James which is very heartbreaking because you could tell that he was very lost all of his friends are booed up with each other so he's like the odd one out he felt it heavily this season in every crowded setting where someone was like making out or loving up on each other he was just in his own little world reading his book trying to like hide basically and yeah I'm, I'm happy that he has figured some stuff out but i would like to see more of isaac i would like to hear him talk more because his lines like i say his lines serve every single time also his book choices for this season last season not so much but for this season i have read a lot of the books that isaac was reading his taste is immaculate not that i was ever questioning him but like wow his taste is really immaculate when it comes to like reading okay so next up we have darcy another cinnamon roll that's just going through a lot right now okay so darcy we know this about darcy she has trouble talking about anything serious without making it into a joke um because everything serious in her life is really fucking depressing so she tries to avoid it at all costs which means that she avoids tara's love confession and tara trying to talk to her about stuff and it's not a healthy coping coping opening mechanism i was trying to figure out what i was trying to say but yeah um she doesn't like to talk about her home life because she lives with a homophobic parent um, I'm, I'm assuming she just lives with her mom because we didn't see anything about her dad but her mom was enough her mom oh not seeing heaven kicking your daughter out for wearing a suit no not everyone can be nick's mother i get it like that's like top tier parenting um just accepting your child for who they are but like bare minimum yet top tier in the show because yet a lot of parents just can't do that apparently so that's nuts um yeah she got kicked out by the end of the show which i don't really know what they're gonna do with that i'm assuming she's gonna be living at tara's house next season because i don't i honestly don't want her to resolve stuff with her mother i don't i think for the betterment of her mental health she needs out of that house 
Oh, if it wasn't gonna be now, it was gonna be sooner rather than later. She's a kid. She probably she doesn't have anywhere else to go. I don't think she's mentioned any aunts, cousins, siblings, whatever. But I don't need her in that house. I want her out because she was just going through it the entire season. Every time she was hanging out with her friends, smiles, happy, whatever. As soon as she got a text or call from her mom, the light dimmed. But yeah, I hope that now that she has communicated with Tara like her feelings and everything and why she did what she did that she will get help because I think therapy is a must I don't want to see them go through that again I understand that all relationships everyone has their issues in relationships like no relationship is ever easy blah 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 I get it but Tara and Darcy those are my children I need them to stay happy so if it takes for um Darcy to go get some therapy so she can work on her communication skills let's do that let's do that please tara she was hurt for a majority of this season um again because darcy couldn't she didn't know how to come to terms with the fact that someone loved her because she couldn't fully love herself which i get but i don't want to see tara sad again next season so we're gonna have to work on that okay and she is she is working on that that's all i want okay that's literally all i want i i i hope that she um gets better with that and tara and everyone else around her is gonna help her because she has a good support system with her friends you can tell that she really does care about tara though. like she loves tara it was very obvious for me since season one and then like the little birthday party that she threw granted throwing a birthday party for someone not hanging out with them a majority of the night but just drinking around the room why why do that <laughs> why because it's obvious like she put a lot of thought into the room she was like tara is a princess she deserves the best and yet as soon as she gets to the party you're like across the room from her for a majority of the night that was strange <laughs> um yeah darcy love her i just want better for her and i think she's gonna get it in the seasons to come her mother can rot i don't care okay so next up we have tara um my baby love her too like i said she said i love you to darcy first and a majority of the season i think she felt like their relationship was one-sided when we now know that's not the case but tara didn't know because darcy wasn't telling her shit so tara was like literally like on the verge of a breakdown for most of the season because she felt like her relationship with this girl that she loves is just like not even really worth it like because again throughout the entire parish trip tara was trying to talk about it and darcy was just like evading which was the sign for tara at least that maybe darcy doesn't love her back which again not the case but when you don't get the answers that you're asking for you start making up your own in your head tara was just trying to figure it out for herself and she just couldn't it feels like she can't talk to darcy about anything serious she doesn't feel like that anymore, hopefully, because we, we got it all figured out, let's hope. And she doesn't know anything about Darcy's home life because Darcy was trying to separate the two. Like her school life and her home life, two totally different worlds for Darcy. But because of that, Tara really was not in the know of anything. Like Darcy was going through hell this season. Tara had no idea. And because of that, Tara was also going through hell because she doesn't know what her partner is dealing with like she was confused as to why darcy wasn't talking to her about shit was looking sad all the time drinking heavily but my, my babies were just going through it this season no more alice no more i can't do this again for another season like they had me the most stressed out of out of any of the couples and that includes Tao and l and they i'll get to them in a second but tara and darcy Oh, I was fighting for my life this season. My heart can't take my babies in pain. Leave the sapphics alone. Please, no more pain. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's Tara. I love her. That's my baby. She looked beautiful at the prom. Like, her purple dress, gorgeous. Also, I love the flashback scene of when Tara was about to go to her ballet thing and Darcy was there to cheer her up and stuff in the winter time. I think that's like a mini comic from the book. That literally refreshed my memory because I think I remember that. Oh my god. Glad that they kind of included that in. Oh, that was so cute. That was adorable. Let's get to the next mess. Um, L. Elle is not a mess. Elle, she's baby girl, love of my life. Elle can do no wrong in my eyes. And she didn't do anything wrong this season. All she did was make friends and figure out where she wants to go to school. <laughs> she's kind of thriving this season, you know, when she's not bothered by towel. She was kind of thriving, living her life as she should. No stress, just vibes and art. Yeah, when it came to Tao, she was confused about what was going on. And girl, so was I. Trying to get over Tao because she thinks that he doesn't like her feels like 
they were forcing their relationship because when he did ask her out on a date he wasn't acting himself so she rightfully said let's not do this because he was changing and she had to call him out for it we were all rooting for the haircut but as soon as he got that haircut he was acting like a brand new person that's not what we wanted that's not what Elle wanted but then she kissed him at the museum and now they're back we're so back we're so back Elle is literally thriving has her dream boy got into the art school that she wanted made new friends i love her little friend group at the art school like her little art friends love them we'll love to see more of them i forgot their names but i like whenever she had scenes with them of them just hanging out and socializing oh i just i love it i love it more of that please like besides towel she was pretty much living her life doing what she had to do her wardrobe also very excellent i like the way l dresses i think that she has like a very feminine yet also like thrifty type of wardrobe with like floral patterns but also she's not afraid to like serve cunt which i like i think that that like her tops sometimes like oh i want them so badly l great amazing could literally could do no wrong if you hate l you hate sunshine and puppies and flowers let's get into a character that everyone has an opinion about whether it's good or bad um let's talk about tao so a lot of people hated tao last season um a lot of people that either didn't read the books or who did read the books and yet still hated him I see y'all are still like on the fence but a lot of people are on team Tao now which I like because I genuinely like Tao as a character he's just misunderstood I've been saying this since day one and y'all finally see the light okay so yeah um like I said he finally got a haircut absolutely absolutely well gal the man you are oh I'm so happy <laughs> I don't know what the swoops were for I still don't understand what the point of the, like, what, what, the, the bang, the bang, no. I'm so happy it was cut. Acting weird around Elle. Whenever she tried to flirt with him, he was just really like, no. But then he wants to get surprised when Elle is distancing herself. Like, you're sending mixed signals, Tao. No, it's because you don't want to ruin your friendship with her. But at the same time, you're not communicating your feelings at all like l would listen because she's literally your best friend you're not communicating anything so now she thinks you don't want to be with her so now she's off doing her own thing hanging with her own friends and then that's when you're just like okay wake up call i finally got to do it like i i hate that it, that's what it takes for him to realize like see sense it takes a minute for tal to get there but when he gets there he goes all out because he actually did ask her out with flowers his hair all done looking suave and shit like yes but then he pretended to be someone else on the date he does this thing where he does self-sabotage himself a lot and i need him to work on that like heavily but he recognizes it but because like he doesn't see it as like something he needs to work on he sees it as like something that makes him unlovable which i find really sad like he really thinks this whole entire season that he's the problem and that he doesn't deserve love that's not the case hon you just need to work on yourself a bit like that's okay like it's okay everyone has their issues and like we finally got to the root of those issues like he said that he lost his dad when he was 12 and so like he has really bad abandonment issues okay get some help for that don't project on your friends don't project on l because he did that to charlie last season where he was projecting because he was afraid that nick was stealing charlie away then he was starting to do it to l when he noticed that she was making new friends and she was inviting them to places and he was like why are they here what did i do it's not really it's 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 <sighs> You just gotta work on yourself and he gets that he got so much better this season like the growth of tao this season is remarkable i'm so happy like can we can we wake it up instead of texting l asking if she was leaving them he instead asked if she got into the school it's kind of the same question but different wording he, he didn't make the situation about himself and that's all we've been asking for that's all we've been asking for because he has this idea that everyone's leaving him and that if something good happens to someone then that means that he's getting left behind it's not about you and he finally realizes that growth growth um granted l didn't tell him that she got in um but that's fair because knowing tao she didn't know how he was gonna react she was like i've been down this road with tao if he finds out i get into this school he's gonna throw a tantrum he didn't again growth but i don't fault l for feeling that way because tao has done that before um as we could see exhibit a season one but yeah uh he was the one who outed charlie i was waiting for that to get brought up because it's brought up in the comics but it was never brought up in season one of the show but yeah i'm glad it, it was touched on here and the way that tao and charlie interact in that scene the way that tao and charlie's friendship 
is expressed in this show just melts my heart they make me so happy like the french the friendships in this show make me so happy i just want him and l to be happy and in order for that to work out tao just needs to like chill a bit he just needs to calm down he needs to continue working on himself i think there's happiness in their future as long as we go against how the comics go, there's gonna be happiness in their future, okay? I am gonna be talking about Nick Nelson next. Um, Golden Retriever, Puppy Dog Boy Nick Nelson. As you guys know, this is my boy. I love Nick. Like, if you hate Nick, then I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with you. Like, how, how could you not like this boy? Okay, so anyway, this season, it was just him trying to figure out how to come out to people. He didn't have to, but he felt the need to. And so, that takes a long time for some people. For him, it took literally the entire season. So that was his character arc. Came out to Image in the first episode, which again, I really liked. Um, came out to his dad and friends, the rugby lads. I'm so happy we saw the rugby lads. It's kind of crazy how picture perfect they are to the actual graphic novel illustrations of them. Like when I first saw pictures of them, I was gagging. But anyway, um, he came out to his brother, doesn't like his brother for obvious reasons that I previously mentioned, um, has a distant relationship with his dad. His dad sucks. Like, there's no other way to put it. Like, he's a deadbeat father. He only sees his kids like twice a year. He doesn't know what's going on with their lives other than rugby and Edinburgh. But it's not even Edinburgh that David goes to, it's Glasgow. So he doesn't even know where his kids are half the time. And yet he's like, oh, you used to visit every summer, you don't anymore. I wonder why. I wonder why. Yeah, his dad is not really all there up here. Like, he doesn't parent. And <laughs> Nick's mom literally had to call him out. She was like, you have no right to, like, state your opinion on anything having to do with Nick, his sexuality, or anything because you're not the parent. No idea what's going on in this house because you're never here. You're never in England. You're all the way across the globe with your other wife. Your, your opinions are relevant. When it comes to David, especially because you didn't raise him. So you don't really have a say in how he turned out because you weren't there for it. Granted, David is an asshole, but you can't say anything because you weren't there. Ugh, dead to be dad's irritating me, especially like when it comes to these characters because like they deserve all the love in the world. And I don't think their dad doesn't love them. It's just that he just sucks at showing it. Like he feels like he needs to do it because he he is their dad. Like he doesn't want to it seems like because he never reaches out to them never responds to texts calls or anything and then like when he does get to talk to them like at the cafe that nick and charlie and his dad was at they don't really talk they had a five minute conversation and then he had to leave early picking up the phone in the middle of your conversation with your son that you only see twice a year interesting yeah nick deserves better but i'm glad that he has he has better he has his mother his mother literally got us amazing parent um he's also fluent in french nick i was waiting for that i was like oh i couldn't wait to hear kit connors try to speak french and he i'm not fluent in french so i am not the person to like determine whether he was excellent at it or not but i haven't heard anyone complain about it so i think that he did pretty well like he got on his zoom he got on his duolingo and he did what he had to do every scene where he was speaking french eating it up eating it up so bad he gave charlie a hickey you know, frisky teens doing frisky, horny teen behavior. That's fine. Um, but it, like his, his reaction to it was precious because he literally had no idea he could do that. <laughs> He was shocked. The man was too stunned to speak. And it was funny, but also like I felt bad. I felt bad for both him and Charlie, mostly Charlie in the situation. Like, oh. He also came out at Darcy's party. So that's where he like came out to everyone, I think. Nick's confidence, like his bravery, his courage is so admirable like it's one of the things i love most but I'm like when it comes to like the people that he loves especially charlie like if he sees that charlie's inconvenience he's just gonna like say fuck it and do something that'll make it easier on charlie hence why he came out to a whole party because everyone was bothering charlie about that hickey and who gave it to him nick was like okay hold on i did it he did the same thing at dinner too he was like okay this is ridiculous this is ridiculous guys i'm i'm bi dad i'm bi charlie's gay can we leave it alone like he's just that kind of person and i think it's funny like he's literally not with the shit he's not with the shit he also stood up to both his dad and his brother he literally told his dad if you want to be here then just be here like if you want to be a good dad then show up and do it he told his brother you act like a 10 year old and i don't care about your opinions and the way that their mom was on mute she couldn't say anything <laughs> because she like he was right david is literally a nuisance their dad is terrible 
Nick had to clock all of them and I was giggling on the sidelines watching. Very satisfying to me. I loved it. I love Nick this season. Um, he's incredibly in love with Charlie. Like it's actually adorable. Like every time this like camera pans to him when he's in a scene with Charlie, oh, he has like puppy dog eyes. Like they're, the light in his eyes when he looks at Charlie, it's actually ridiculous. Um, that's Nick, Nick Nelson, the rugby lad, the golden retriever boy love him if anything ever happens to him oh there will oh hell will be paid okay so next character and last character i will be talking about is mr charlie spring baby boy uh yeah so charlie <sighs> while i have been excited for this season i've also been dreading it because i knew we were gonna get to some of the darker stuff that happens with Charlie and I was afraid to see that on my screen because I didn't know if I'd be able to handle it. That sounds very dramatic, but it's true because reading it, it was bad for me. <laughs> I was in a reading slump because of volume three of Heartstopper and volume four. <laughs> um, so watching that on my screen, oh, oh, so much pain. He wants to protect Nick from being bullied the way that he was. He can't really control that. And he does that. He wants to make everything in his life be perfect and happy and when it's not like that when he doesn't have control over that then he doesn't eat and that's not great told nick that he can hold off on telling people he's by if he's not ready which is a good response because honestly nick was feeling like really bad about it because he kept telling charlie that he would do it but it's something that nick should do on his own time and i think charlie like had to tell him that he was like we can hold off if you're not ready to tell everyone like don't worry about it um also wants to be able to show his love and affection towards nick in public but he all he obviously can't do that because nick's not out so it was very like hard for charlie this season to be in a relationship with nick not because nick makes it hard it's just because the situation isn't ideal but it didn't make him love nick any less which obvious on screen like they these they, these two are so in love it's actually like sickening he rejoined the rugby team so him and nick could be together because they're separated a lot this season they don't really have homeroom together parents are getting in the way his mother said no you will not be seeing him until the history work is done the parent trip was like the few episodes we got of them just non-stop being together which i like he's not doing well in school charlie get yourself together because i was actually on his mom's side like a complete ban no that's not because he's a he's a teenager he's gonna rebel a complete ban was no go but yes a little bit of separation from nick to do your work like you're flunking you are flunking out of classes you need to do your homework like i was taken aback i was like charlie you're smarter than this and he is because he finished that paper with like five minutes to spare before the bell rang so i'll keep my mouth shut but that was crazy i was like you're not turning in any homework assignments but yeah back to his ed if you like briefly re recall the first season it was shown a like a few times in scenes how charlie does not eat when he is stressed or like when he's overthinking he doesn't eat like it wasn't said in the first season but if you see the way that he responds to food in situations it's very clear so i like how it's more apparent in this season and further explained because if you go back and rewatch re season one it's definitely there and this season it just got even worse more sad um it just got more sad he doesn't talk about how he feels like i said he wants everything to be happy and stress-free and that's just not how life is and i really hope that he does start talking to nick because nick sees charlie he knows what charlie is dealing with like he he could see that charlie wasn't eating like as soon as like it started he didn't know how to approach it obviously but like he he knows what charlie is going through and he wants to be there for him and so i hope charlie takes advantage of like his great amazing boyfriend that's here to listen to him whenever and just like talks about his problems gets a therapist and just like it's better i just want him to get better so badly <laughs> i hate seeing charlie and nick upset like i hate seeing them sad this makes me so upset to even talk about like don't even I, like he doesn't talk about his feelings with anyone not even tao tao has no idea how badly charlie was bullied no one does he just keeps everything inside and i hate that for him like please speak up you don't always have to be the one who's like sunshine happy and rainbows all the time like you don't need to do that like that one conversation that him and nick had in that last episode on the beanbag chair that literally broke me like finally you're talking about your feelings but oh my god it's so tragic i just want him to get better so badly and i know like the journey that he's on he is gonna get better but it's just really hard to see him like this i will say though his confidence has skyrocketed the way that he defends himself in front of ben 
and Harry. Amazing. His confidence is amazing this season, for sure. Um, it's just like, you know, the, the ED, it's just really bad. It's like so sad to watch. I think that Joe Locke does a really good job of like playing Charlie. Like it just felt so real and personal and just like, ugh, those are all the characters. That's every single character. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about what I disliked. Let's get it out of the way. So much Ben. Why? Couldn't tell you. Um, I don't know if you guys know this but if you read the comics ben is kind of like an afterthought after volume two he's barely seen in the books maybe brought up like once or twice no more so i was kind of surprised when i saw trailers and teasers of just a lot of ben it made me scared because i was like does that mean we're gonna get a lot of ben in the season and we did but it worked out okay because i was afraid that they were gonna try to redeem him this season and they did not. Alice did not let me down. Queenie, love you. I did not think it was necessary for him to be in the season this much because he didn't bring anything to me. All he did was just remind the people of how terrible he already was from last season and I didn't need any reminders. All he did was bring more stress and turmoil and anger into the show for me. I, I did not like his character. I don't need to see him anymore. He does not need to be redeemed and I'm glad that he's gone next season. That's all I disliked. Um, that's literally it. Just Ben and his existence. Hated it. Hated it every single second. Let's get on to the stuff I did like. The teacher storyline. I'm surprised that some people didn't want the teacher storyline. I love the teachers, Mr. Ajahe and Mr. Farouk. I love them so much. Their mini comics in the Heartstopper graphic novels kind of give me life. So I was excited to see them and their relationship progression and everything. But I was surprised when I got on Twitter and people were hating on it. Why? I thought that they were so cute. They're like the perfect grumpy sunshine dynamic that I just love. Like everything about them just made me so happy and giddy and like uh, just smiles all around. I love them. Also, I think it's necessary to have that type of storyline in a show like Heartstopper where like it's not too late to find love. Because Mr. Farouk did not find out that like he was gay into like his late 20s, he's never gotten to have like the joyful high school teenage love romance that all of these other kids have. And like it's nice for a storyline with adults to be like flourished in the show and it's cute like it's just wholesome cute fun you guys are haters and then also nick and tao's friendship development i've wanted this for so long nick and tao's friendship is actually like one of my favorite things to ever exist <laughs> um i just like the fact that they're like two sides uh, like of the opposite spectrum like two sides opposite sides but like they kind of like their banter works very well like whenever will and kit are in a scene together they're kind of stealing it they're kind of still in the show it's crazy um because of the way that nick and towel did not like each other last season it's just very satisfying to see like they're able to talk to each other and be friends um after the hell that was last season between the two of them <laughs> with that being said platonic love in the show and friendship in general makes me very happy um in this show especially where it's like kind of a found family type of thing um the friendships in this show are all great like the many friendships like charlie and tao or like the girl friendships with sahar darcy tara l those make me really happy the overall friendship with all of them it makes me so happy like it shows up platonic love is just as important as romantic love and i like that message a lot getting a deep dive into each character's life at home and family like episode two titled family probably like in my top three favorite episodes this season and it, i i was surprised by that trust me i'm just as surprised i thought all of the paris episodes would be in my top three but no family is like top three for sure top five sure i just like being able to see the different dynamics that each of the kids have with their family because obviously like you have nick and his mom basically besties um <laughs> they tell each other everything nick's not afraid to open up to his mom and then you see charlie and his parents and they're a little bit more strict more firmer he can't go to them about everything he doesn't really feel connected to his mom um kind of feels like his mom just doesn't understand him and tori feels the same way about their mom and yeah it's just like the differences like the contrast and like comparisons between the families is really interesting i especially enjoy tao's mom every time she was on screen 
I just think he has an adorable mother. Like, the woman that plays her, every time Elle is mentioned, so cute. Like, uh, uh like, she is just like that. She has been shipping Elle and Tal from the start. Like, her reaction when they got together, relatable. So relatable. I just loved everything about it. And I, I especially loved the Paris trip, because, duh. Um, I've been waiting to see the Paris squad go to Paris since the last season came out. And I'm happy that it was very accurate. Like, I got every single scene. Every single special moment from the graphic novel that took place in Paris, they included. I think. From what I remember, because, like, my memory was getting jogged as I, as I was watching the show. They included, like, I think every single, like, iconic moment. I was like, could it be done? Is it possible? And they did it. Within another eight episodes that were only 30 minutes long. Kind of wanted 10 episodes. But eight episodes works. It's just the fact that I get through this show so quickly knowing I'm going to have to wait over a year for another season. And that just doesn't work for me. I really wish the seasons were longer. But I think the pacing of each episode works and the amount of episodes do work as well nothing feels too rushed it just it works perfectly um i'm just really greedy and i want more that's all there is to it but yeah that's heart stopper season two i just have a lot to say and i'm happy that this show has been out i'm seriously going to rewatch the season again once i finish recording this <laughs> i hope that you guys like this video if you did thank you um if you like to follow me on social media here it is I mostly interact on Twitter and Instagram, but if you like to follow me on all my other social medias, they will be linked in the description below, because I'm sure I'll just be talking about Heartstopper for the next month. I'm making this my whole entire personality again. What can I say? What can I say? Yeah, I think that's it. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, everyone.